In my dad's two-story wood cabin, there was something hidden under the bed downstairs. But what was hiding there isn't the scary part of the story. Under the bed was my dad's 12-gauge shotgun, which he kept there in the cocoa bedroom downstairs for various reasons. For context, the cocoa bedroom is named after the pet bird we keep in there. The story begins with the day my friends and I decided we wanted to hang out and take a break from our jobs. I asked my dad if it would be okay if we stayed in his cabin, and he allowed it but asked that we be careful. A few days later, we headed out and eventually arrived at the cabin and brought our stuff inside. We immediately got ready to go fishing, and later on we built a campfire, played music on our guitars, told jokes, etc. We were having a great time. Eventually, it was getting late, so we decided to put out the fire and go to bed. Our friend group was two guys including myself and three girls, and to keep everyone's name private, let's call the other guy A and the girls B, C, and D. A and I slept in the cocoa room, and the girls slept in the other bedroom upstairs. While I was sleeping, A woke me up and said that he heard someone talking outside. I told him that he was just tired, and that maybe it was just an animal scavenging food we left outside by the campfire. But as I was telling him this, I heard the doorknob on the front door of the cabin start shaking loudly. I got goosebumps up my arms, and I looked at A and he was breathing heavily. I got out my dad's 12-gauge shotgun from under the bed and loaded it and cocked it. A looked at me and said, are you going to shoot them? I replied, if they are going to hurt us, I might have to. Then I told A to get the large knife from the kitchen, and we walked up to the front door. Just as we were about to open it, the front door swung open and there were two skinny men standing there. One of them was older, probably in his 50s, wearing a plain black shirt, and was holding some kind of homemade knife, and the other guy was younger, possibly in his 20s. I couldn't see him completely because he was standing behind the older guy, but I could tell that he was holding some kind of a big weapon. As soon as I saw them, I backed up and pointed the gun at the two guys, and A also pointed the knife at them. We sat there, frozen, without saying a single word for what felt like a whole minute. So I spoke and told them, F off or I will blow your heads off. They both panicked and ran into the woods. After we confirmed that they were really gone, A and I gasped for air as if we hadn't breathed for a long time. I told A to go check on the girls and decided to go outside, still holding my dad's 12 gauge to check around the cabin. I then went inside and told A that I didn't see anything and he said that the girls were still asleep. A little shocked, I said, wow, after all that commotion, they're still sleeping? A and I decided to tell the girls what happened when they woke up in the morning. Maybe because of the adrenaline and maybe because of the fear, A and I didn't sleep a wink that night. When the girls woke up, we told them what happened and naturally they were shocked and scared. We decided to cut our stay at the cabin short and go home that day. When we got home, I told my dad what happened and he scolded me for not calling the police. But he was also glad that we all came back alive and well. My dad then called his friend who was a cop and reported what happened. My dad told me to call A and to come to our house so he could also give a statement about the two men in the incident. It's been two years since that incident now. My friend and I still hang out once in a while, but A and I will never forget that incident. One day when we were hanging out, A said to me, what do you think would happen if your dad's 12 gauge hadn't been there? And to this day, I am afraid to imagine the answer. It was the middle of the summer. My parents had left for the weekend to go to our house in Cape Cod. It's about a two hour drive away. So it was no big deal for them to leave me alone for a few days. My mom had made some pulled pork and pasta for me to heat up, to eat whenever. And I had some money if I wanted to order pizza. Things were all good. The first night I was alone, I stayed up till about three in the morning playing Xbox. So I woke up really late the next day. I checked my phone and when I woke up, I saw it was a little past one. I had made plans to play some street hockey with three of my friends. So I threw myself out of the bed and I stumbled into the shower. I take really long showers. So when my parents are gone, I go crazy. I was in there for about 45 minutes on my phone, scrolling through Reddit and Twitter. And I mean, Twitter, Twitter. So then I heard my front door open out of nowhere. The bathroom is directly up the stairs from the back door. And the thing is, it's pretty loud when it opens and closes. I immediately froze since obviously I was supposed to be alone. I waited for about two minutes. 
my ears trained in, trying to hear anything. I heard nothing. I figured it was just the wind or maybe my parents were home early. So I turned off the shower, wrapped my towel around myself, and slowly walked down the stairs to check it out. So the stairs to the kitchen are pretty tight and walled in. So it's essentially like walking down a tighter version of a regular stairwell. So I can't see into the kitchen when I walk down. Even though my house is old as shit, and each step on the stairs makes a super loud creak, I still took my time and tried to be as quiet as possible. I probably took about 45 seconds walking down all 12 stairs. So when I get to the second to the last stairs, I take a little breather and compose myself. In my mind, I knew I was being stupid. There obviously wasn't anything in the kitchen. There's no way I wouldn't have heard another noise. And there's no reason for them to still be in the kitchen, even if there were burglars or something in my house. After sort of mentally chastising myself for being such a wuss, I sort of chuckled to myself for being so stupid and just normally walked the last two stairs. And I turned a corner into the kitchen. Standing about two feet away from me, in the middle of my kitchen, is a man staring straight at me perfectly still with a massive smile on his face just staring at me the thing i remember most vividly wasn't his face or his smile but his arms they weren't just at his side he held them in the strangest most abnormal position i've ever seen they were where one would normally hold their arms but he had rotated them to the point where they were almost completely reversed as well as lifting them up behind himself. I don't know why I remember this so much, but it's just the most demonic, abnormal position I've ever seen. Honest to God, I think I almost had a heart attack right there. Looking back, I can realize how creepy this situation was, but in the moment, I just took a step toward him and punched him as hard as I could in the jaw, sort of half slapping slash pushing him towards the ground. The second I connected, I beelined up the stairs, dropping my towel in the kitchen with my heart beating out of control, running up the stairs naked as hell. I f***ing sprinted into my room and locked the door behind me. I quickly put a chair up against the doorknob, like you see on TV. Almost without thinking, I immediately called 911. Nearly in tears, I told the operator what happened. As I sat on the floor in my room, practically in the fetal position, staring at the door, praying that the cop would be here soon. I noticed the light coming from the gap between my door. It had stopped. This dude was standing outside of my bedroom door. There's no words to describe the feeling I had. I was paralyzed with fear, watching the shadows across the bottom of the door shift in tiny ways. I stayed balled up, staring at the gap, naked, praying the man would go away for what seemed like an hour. All the while the 911 operator was asking, hello, sir, are you there, hello? I didn't want to make a noise, and even if I wanted to move my arms to bring the phone to my mouth, I don't think I could have. Eventually the light returned to the gap, and I heard the faintest of footsteps slowly creaking the wooden floorboards as he walked down the hall. It was silent for minutes as I just sat there curled up, unable to even speak, naked. I heard banging on the front door and the sound of two officers entering my house. I finally felt safe and opened the door to two of them standing there and I jumped on them and wrapped my legs around them. I almost cried. I was naked. Nowadays my parents don't even leave me home alone, thank God. And I check every lock on the house before going to bed. I still get nightmares occasionally and my heart starts racing whenever I see someone standing still, but I'm doing alright. Even working with sketch artists and a few lineups. The police never found whoever this guy was in my house. That sends shivers down my spine every time I look outside, half expecting to see him standing across the street smiling under a lamppost. I have no idea what he wanted or who he was, but regardless, that was the scariest night of my life.